First, I'd like to thank you all for allowing me the chance to have the, uh, this moment um, to be able to give the eulogy for Mr. Welsh. I know this is a very sad moment, and um, we've all been talking about all these wonderful things, all these nice things to say about him, all these I mean, really nice things, but really, I think we need to be honest, was he really that great? <laughs> Um, my wife, my wife is, a, uh, is a therapist, and she has taught me that it's really important for us to not hold things in. We need to purge ourselves of the anger we have at this time. To purge ourselves, uh, to the frustrations, the anger, you know, we, we, you all have that, um, honey, what? What? See if I can find something nice to say. <laughs> I'm all embarrassed now. Um, okay, uh, well, it's good to see you, Mr. Welsh. Um, uh, well, <clears throat> all right. Let me, uh, let me try a couple of these things, I guess. Um, so, Mr. Welsh, uh, I, uh, my own father died before I started to teach at Hoover, and. Uh, so Mr. Welsh kind of filled that, that hole in my life. Um, and, and Nard kind of helped me understand what that, what that meant. Serious actors all had, they all had families and uh, that they were always had problems and troubles and divorces and deaths and murders and all kinds of crazy things. And I had nothing. I had nothing. My parents were married and uh, everybody was happy and it was no problem. And I just felt like I was never going to be an actor. And so, Mr. Walsh, you are that uh, that abusive father. <laughs> Say Mr. Welsh was really my greatest teacher in a lot of ways. Um, I came from Utah, a very sheltered place, a place where I never really learned a lot about uh, what was going on here in California. I had a lot of words I'd never learned before. Um, Kevin taught me words. Uh, I, well, I mean, I mean, lots of words. Uh, I'll, I'll try hard not to. Not to abuse you all too much of this. Um, let me tell you, this was interesting. When I got my job, it was, uh, was kind of nice. I, there was lots of people who auditioned, or auditioned, yes. I mean, came back for the, for the job. And apparently there was this woman from Chicago that Kevin really liked. Um, I don't know, maybe they had gone, maybe they played pool together or something. Maybe she was a very good pool player because I had heard that he wanted her to be the drama teacher, not me, because she had a nice rack. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how I got the job, but... <laughs> at the time, anyway, but as we went along, Mr. Welsh, uh, he liked to tell little stories, little things, especially when my daughter was around, he liked to pretend like he liked me a lot more than, you know, like, um, <clears throat> it was a little awkward in front of my daughter, and she was, uh, well, let me move on. Uh, as the principal, of course, I had to cast him some shows. <clears throat> uh, he was never so good as the very first role I, I gave him, actually, he played a dead body. <laughs> Show. Um, when he was acting, he was great. When he was preparing for the role, there was lots of jokes about doing things to dead bodies and stuff. Um, 
I never, I didn't learn my lesson at that point when we cast him in, in, a, in a show, uh, Bye Bye Birdie, where he actually had lines. <laughs> and he actually had to stay and be in the show and rehearse with us. And uh, oh my God, here we go. This is Mr. Welsh. So um, this is a couple things that ended up with Mr. Welsh. Uh, can you do the dance again for me? Um, this is something you have to do off stage to the kids on stage. Um, the kids know how to, uh, the kids know the name for that. The uh, Hump the Air Dance. I also learned uh, how to encourage my students from off stage that way. Um, he, he taught me. Um, how to tell them that they're number one, to really encourage them, they're the best, they're number one, he would, he would do that. You're number one! <laughs> You're the best! I'll say he would do a lot of that, and I was, uh, understood that was um, something that was, I guess, how you do things here in California. <laughs> um, he was a big fan of Michael Jackson, apparently. Uh, the kids told me about this, I didn't get to see it, he never... Being the, uh, the director, he wouldn't let me see a lot of what was happening backstage. He would uh, pretend like he was being a good kid in the back. He had his own little corner. He locked himself off so that he wouldn't bother the other kids and students, right? The other kids, I'll tell you about that. Yeah, he was one of the kids, of course. No, no, uh, not at all. He, um, he, he made himself look like Michael Jackson, and he would get the voice like Michael Jackson, and he would ask the, the boys to come and visit him. <laughs> he thought that was funny. 